read in a scripture at one time that Jesus Christ was speaking to the disciples as he was teaching about the last judgment. And he said that in the last days, there are those who will be actually brought and they will be put in the left side. Those are the ones which are being defined as the, 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 the gods. And there are those who will be put in the right hand of the Lord. And those ones are the ones who are being defined as the sheep. And then he will tell them, he will tell the gods who are on the left side, let go be in the lake of fire. Okay? Go there, be in the lake of fire. Because when I was hungry, you did not feed me. When I needed clothing, you did not actually clothe me. When I was sick, you did not actually even come to bother and visit me and offer me necessary help. And then the gods will ask him, when did we ever see you sick and we never bothered to attend to you? When did we ever saw you naked and never bothered to clothe you? When did we ever see you hungry and we never bothered actually to feed you? And he said, and the Lord says and he tells them that if there is anything that you never did, Anything that you never did to these brothers here, you see, those are the things that actually you never did to me directly. And then he will tell them, go here to the lake of fire, and he will release them to be taken to hell. Okay? And then again, he turns again to the sheep on the right hand, and he tells them, welcome to the rest of my father. Because when I was sick, you actually attended to me. When I was hungry and thirsty, you gave me food and water to drink. When I was naked, you clothed me. And when I was so much in need of companionship, you were both there to offer me fellowship and companionship. And the sheep will again ask him again, Lord, when did we ever see you naked and we clothed you? When did we ever actually saw you hungry and thirsty and we gave you food and water? When did we ever see you in need of companionship and we were there to give you fellowship? And the Lord tells them, any little thing that you ever did to these young ones, my brothers and sisters, you actually directly did it to me. And this is scripture, my brothers and sisters. This is actually scripture. And you remember in the holy book, that is even the book of Mormon, that there's a king there called King Benjamin. He's saying that if ye are in the service of your fellow being, ye are only in the service of your God. And this is what the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints has always taken it very serious knowing that in doing so, you are only in the service of your, of your God. And today, I would like just to share with you what exactly the church is doing in terms of actually providing relief to those who are facing famine, both in the Middle East and some parts of Africa. The church has really done a lot in ensuring that those wonderful souls are actually well taken care of, just like the way the Lord spoke in the book of Malak, in the book of Luke. Okay, when you read in the book of Luke, that is what the Lord is saying during the judgment that will be actually, you know, placed. And uh, this is something that is so key, and especially for any humanity, that you need to put it into considerations right from governments, from offices of service, and from whatever capacity that you are in, that the Lord is expecting us to offer this service to our fellow human beings, because in doing so, we are actually serving Him. And I would like to share with you this clip of what the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is actually doing across the world. And please welcome, join me. A multi-level partnership has an urgent mission, bringing together an international body of humanitarian groups to save lives and relieve the suffering of 20 million people in Africa and the Middle East. 
the World Food Program, and several non-government and faith-based organizations are distributing life-saving assistance to these nations. Aid workers are on the ground providing vital food, clean water and medicine where the need is excruciating for more than three quarters of a million people. It's estimated some 600,000 children will die in the coming months unless they receive this treatment and care. It's amazing to see people getting the food uh, in conditions that are tough, but this is an area that's stable right now. You never know what's going to happen tomorrow, but every day that we can be here is another day that we prevent famine. LDS Charities, the humanitarian arm of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, is one of a dozen partners helping to relieve this pandemic suffering through the donations of Latter-day Saints. LDS Charities has donated more than $11 million so far this year to organizations providing assistance to those on the brink of starvation. So, my brothers and sisters, as you can see what exactly the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is actually doing, partnering with different organizations to ensure that they actually save life. And uh, this is why uh, I, I am actually taking interest to share this so that for those who may not actually have a picture of what the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is all about, that they can have at least a picture of what the Church stands for and what the Church actually is doing uh, to the nations and communities in terms of helping people to be able to actually, you know, be okay and be safe, saving humanity. And uh, at times when I look at these clips like this, at times I'm very much saddened, very, very much saddened. Like why will a people go through such a like things? Why, why, why will people go through such a like things when they have elaborate governments and, and these are people who maybe you'll find even they pay their taxes in their own countries. But what happens is that they don't actually get those services back. Because, you know, food is, is, is actually one of the human rights. Okay? It's, it's, a, it's a human right. People must have food for them to survive. You know? We don't just live to eat, but we eat to survive. And especially... When you see these countries, you will actually be able to know that actually people are really going through a lot. People are really going through a lot. And, and, and I don't understand. Uh, some of them you'll find it's because of war on areas. They've come to a refugee center with small kids. Like now you can see a lot of small children and, 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 and women are the ones actually suffering in these camps. But men are outside fighting. And you wonder what are they fighting for? You wonder. Uh, people have voted into governments and, 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 and they cannot actually deliver what they promise their very own people. Other than just subjecting them into miseries and poverty. And, 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 and at times I don't think if God is happy. God, I, I don't think if God is happy with this. You know, I don't think God is happy with this. You know, and, and this is a, one of the greatest challenges for mostly leaders to ensure that such a like things do not happen. You know, humanity is, is supposed to be saved. And, 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 and to me, I'm always thankful knowing that the church is actually putting some more effort to ensure that lives are saved. But these lives could be actually prevented when some people who are entrusted with leadership, they do what exactly they say. You know, because during your campaigns, you promise people a lot of heavens and moons and stars. But once you clinch power, you've forgotten. And then you subject people into poverty and all that. And I think that is, that is very sad very, very sad. And uh, those communities, those nations that have been uh, were affected, we've always continued praying for them. And, 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 and at times you go somewhere, you see a community that has been displaced, it's, you just pray for them. You'd, it is not their wish for them to be refugees. 
it is not their wish for them to you know to go through what they've gone through they will also want to live a comfortable life but they are going through that it is not because they wanted it it is a situation it is a situation and and and, and this is this is very saddening and especially knowing that i they are part of my people and and, and and when i look at it this way i'm always very sad about this and and and, and things need to be done properly surely things need to be done properly otherwise we thank the church for what it's doing and for the greatest things that it has done in terms of saving lives and ensuring that children and women are kept safe and i know the lord is watching and some day the lord will alleviate us from this poverty otherwise thank you very much god bless you i'm looking forward to see you again next time thank you